Here's a pair of 1970s vintage digital clocks, both of which were made by the same company, but are branded differently. They're made by Echo National Industries, Inc. of Los Angeles, California. This one here is a model DX100. You can see the serial number on the bottom there, 564. Not a very high serial number. And here's the second one. It's a Seth Thomas. Model 869-00. Both of these work, although they could work a little bit better. I'll start with the Seth Thomas solid state right here. Now you notice the whole display didn't light up. That's unfortunately a common problem with these uh, Panaplex clocks. There we go. And finally the whole thing is lit up. The neon gas inside the displays needs to be ionized before it'll light because the voltage isn't high enough to guarantee that. With the cover off, the displays light up immediately, but with this uh, filter in place, it sometimes takes a while for every digit to light up. On the back here are three buttons. The one furthest over to the right here is the fast set. You'll notice it holds the seconds and that this clock is 12 hours only. Sometimes when one of the buttons is released it glitches out like that. The middle button is the slow set button. Unfortunately this is another electrical problem this clock has. I believe this is due to the driver chip in there. I'm not sure 100% yet. I don't have a replacement for it in any case. You'll notice the bottom segment is out on every digit. So that means that either that segment driver is bad or the clock chip is not providing the signal appropriately for that segment. This clock was working fine for a while and then that segment started uh, dropping out. And it's not something that's sensitive to like vibration or anything like that. It's kind of a weird electrical problem. The last button here on the left is the hold button. There's supposed to be a uh, mesh back here that's missing and I haven't replaced it yet. As is the little wood grain piece that's supposed to go there. You'll see that this clock has that piece. The two clocks clearly came out of the same molds. They were just decorated differently. Now I'll show you the other one which has a Japan Airlines badge on it. This would have definitely been too expensive of an item to give away to a consumer except maybe in a contest or something. So perhaps this once sat on an executive's desk or something like that. I guess we'll probably never know. I'm going to plug this one in now. You'll see that the hours came up right away, but the seconds have not appeared yet. They'll show up eventually. You can see that the bottom segment came back on this clock, even though it's just been sitting there for a little bit. Sometimes messing with the uh, fast and slow set gets it to come back. But eventually it just kind of comes back on its own. There it goes. This one actually came up nice, which it doesn't usually do. Usually it kind of comes up with an invalid display in the hours digit, and you have to cycle it through 24 hours to get that to go away. This clock is actually cooperating much better for the video than I was expecting it to. It sometimes also glitches out when you press the fast or slow set buttons. Like it jumps uh, substantially ahead in time. You know, so I quickly press the button, it'll do that. It can make this clock a little tricky to set. I was able to reduce that problem a little bit on this one by adding a capacitor across the contacts of all three switches. But it only marginally improved the problem. You notice sometimes when pressing one of the set buttons that a, a digit will disappear briefly and then come back like that. These clocks were not designed to be repaired but I uh, took a crack at that anyway. You'll notice that there's no screws anywhere on this thing. The whole thing is just glued together. These two little additional holes were added by me. There's like a metal weight in the bottom of this base here. 
that was probably originally glued down and it was just sliding around and kind of slamming into the sides of the, the cabinet which is fairly thin brittle plastic except for the base plate which is quite thick actually it took a while to drill through but I drilled through and then just squirted some hot glue in there to uh, glue it into place so now it doesn't rattle anymore I also had to glue the base which was cracked I'm gonna unplug both of them and uh, show you guys the insides to get at the guts of these clocks you just have to kind of pull them apart I grabbed onto this piece and then the back and just kind of pulled and worked it loose you can see where a foam pad was glued down and these little posts are for pushing on the switches you can see it uses an MM5314N and this Dionix DI297N this is the chip that I believe has the problem but I'll have to hook a scope up to it or something uh, while it's running which I don't like to do because this clock you know, has a 180 volt line in it. To see where the problem is whether it's with the chip itself or with this chip the uh, segment driver chip. These transistors here select the six digits in sequence because the clock is multiplexed and these are the switches on this example there was like a piece of old dried up electrical tape on the tops of each one of these that was just causing the switches to bind and they're insulated anyway because they're plastic so I just took those pieces off I had tried replacing them but it was just making it harder to set with how flaky the thing is now in this one the front separated uh, pretty cleanly which is nice, so it didn't crack at all. There are the Panaplex displays. You can see this one has the ability to indicate AM and PM, but this particular clock does not use that feature because the MM5314 chip does not have that capability. The labeling in here is kind of obscured by these capacitors I added in an attempt to reduce the glitchiness of using the switches. It was not all that successful, but I think it improved the problem a little bit. In any case, it says ACO National Industries on the circuit board. On this clock, the front piece did not come off, and I didn't really want to force it. There's no real good way to pry it without damaging anything. That was not a good noise. That's why I don't like uh, pulling these apart. Once I'm done with this video, I'm probably just going to glue uh, this back into place. On this clock, there was no electrical tape pieces here. There was just felt pads on the bottoms of these little switch uh, peg things. I replaced the dried up foam piece uh, here with a little mesh thing from a broken pair of headphones. I'll have to see if I save the other uh, mesh piece to put in the second clock. I changed the capacitors out in both of them just for the interests of uh, safety. Now in this clock both chips were painted over with black paint I suspect that the MM534 at the very least was a kind of fallout chip because usually when this thing is powered up it does not come up cleanly as I mentioned I'll uh, plug it in another time or two just to show you that you can also see that the circuit is a little different this one has two transistors for each digit and this one just has one for each digit and then these capacitors that aren't in the other one fairly big disk capacitors otherwise they're the same this uh, grounding here was added by me again trying to solve the glitchiness issue the other MM5314 clocks I have don't have that glitchiness issue anywhere near as bad as these two do to get at the other side of the board I kind of snapped off these melted over plastic pegs and uh, then I was able to lift the board up and get to the other side of it I'm going to try and show you guys what I meant about the Panaplex displays needing to be ionized. So I'm going to just plug this in one more time. Okay, I just plugged it in. I had to actually do it a few times to get it to not light up the seconds digit. Now watch what happens when the digits are exposed to light. I'll, do it. I'll try and do it slowly. See? As soon as the light strikes the, the tube there, it lights up. And you notice when I unplug it and wait a second and then plug it back in, it'll light up 
everywhere right away because there's light striking the tubes. Won't stop it from glitching, but it does light up all the way. I'm going to plug the second clock back in and hopefully it'll do the glitchy thing it usually does. So you'll notice it's gone past 12 hours. And now it's just getting into uh, the kind of strange behavior it usually does. That partially lit segment there. If I keep going, it'll eventually sort itself out. It looks sort of fixed right now, but it's not. You'll notice that these two segments are now back to full brightness, and they were kind of at half brightness before. So once it's like this, it runs normally and keeps time. Like I said earlier in the video, I suspect that the chip used was a kind of production fallout. that had a, a glitch, but it's not entirely broken. As was apparently tradition in the 1970s, despite how expensive integrated circuits were, neither of the two chips that these clocks use are socketed, which makes replacing them to see if that improves things a lot more of a pain in the butt. There's just too much risk of destroying the mostly working chips for me to want to desolder all those leads, you know, and add a socket and then put them back. So for now I'm going to leave them, although I do need to figure out what's going on with the segment driver in this clock because it doesn't look right obviously with the bottom segment out. Well this video got kinda long. Thanks for watching!